That's an increase from last month, which was 683, 551 I'm sorry, I missed that. It's increased from 683, 561 
remitted to the state was $1,413.38, and the total was $3,165.19. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members, how are you all today? Size cold. Uh, Canada Fire and Rescue, monthly run report for the month of January. Uh, I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but we did set a new record for the most calls that ever run by the fire department, which is up about 10% over the previous high mark. Uh, calls for the month were 61. Of that, structure fires, seven. Grass fire and brush fire, eight. Unauthorized burns, three. Activated fire alarms, seven. Motor vehicle collisions, nine. First responder calls, these are the medical calls. We ran 27. Of that, uh, Acadian transported six patients from the city of China Grove. And a breakdown of calls per area. Calls in the city of China Grove, 12. Calls in the county unincorporated area, 17. Mutual aid calls, 32. Brief summary of calls in the city of China Grove. On the 4th of January, 3200 block of Areola Lane, case number 007, lift assist. On the 5th, 3200 block Areola Lane, case number 009, lift assist. On the 5th, 2700 block FM 1516 South, case number 010, medical call for difficulty breathing. On the 6th, Highway 87 East and South Foster Road, case number 012, motor vehicle crash. On the 6th, also 8100 block Highway 87 East, case number 014, activated fire alarm. On the 7th of January, 8100 block Highway 87 East, case number 019, activated fire alarm with water flow. On the 9th, 3800 block of Real Road, case number 023, medical call for chest pains. On the 13th, 8100 block of Highway 87 East, case number 028, activated fire alarm. On the 14th, 8100 block of Highway 87 East, case number 30, medical call, possible stroke. On the 15th, 7500 block Highway 87 East, case number 034. Motor vehicle crash on the 16th, 7,000 block tree bend. Case number 035, medical call for seizures. And on the 17th, 4,200 block area of lane. Case number 037, lift assist. And like I said, we set a new record. I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but it just kind of tells you how things are and uh, things have not let up. Month of February, we've been extremely busy already. Uh, we're doing a lot of structure fires, a lot of grass fires. I do ask the people of the China Grove, because I'm concerned about this, uh, if you own property land, please keep it shredded or cut short. Uh, I have received several messages uh, from the state fire marshal's office, the county fire marshal's office, and the emergency management coordinator that they're predicting uh, the rest of February and possibly deep into March, high fire danger because uh, of all the cold fronts and cold weather we've been having, all the vegetation's dead, but previous to this we did have rain, so all the vegetation, which is now uh, fuel for fire, is up about two feet. So fire spreads very rapidly when there's strong winds out of the north and low humidity. So I said, I do ask that if you do old property, uh, it's a good idea to keep it shredded and cut low, because that will slow down the, the, the spread of fire. We did a fire last week with St. Hedwig, and we watched five acres burn probably in about seven minutes. It just went like that. And it was actually kind of a non windy day, but the relative humidity was so low, which it means there's no moisture in the air. And that fire burned, like I said, five acres in about five or six minutes. It just was totally consumed five acres. So again, just everybody be safe. We are not under a burn bed at this time. We do ask that citizens who wish to burn contact myself or the ladies here at City Hall to obtain uh, permission to burn. There is an ordinance in place in the City of China Grove about open burning.
Next time on his one be his uh, citizens to be heard. Uh, this time, City Council, any issues concerning no City Council discussion or action can be taken on the item. It's not on the agenda. The mayor reserves the option to recognize persons. Anyone speaking who is not recognized by the mayor will be considered a violation of the rules of the meeting. And will be escorted out from the meeting. All recognized persons shall address the mayor. Please limit your remarks to three minutes. Take your name and name an address for the record. And no personal text shall be allowed. And then your first person, Allison Lanky. because I know when you get to the um, voting, when you get further down the ballot, sometimes you don't know everybody who's on it. So I thought I'd introduce myself. I'm Allison Lanty. I'm running for county court at law number 15. That is a Bear County uh, position, so everybody in the in Bear County can vote. County court 15 is a criminal misdemeanor court. I have specialized in criminal law for 23 years. I am board certified in criminal law since 1996. Um, in my first 17 years of practice, I was a prosecutor. And after 17 years, I opened up my own practice, Allison Lanty, attorney at law, and I do private criminal defense. Um, I do have an opponent in the Republican primary, um, but this is a criminal court, and I am board certified in criminal law, and have spent my whole career practicing criminal law. So I have experience on both sides of the court, and I think that experience and balance on both sides of the court will serve me well as a judge. I am the only uh, candidate that has that type of experience in criminal law. So Allison Lanty, County Court Number 15. I appreciate the opportunity to introduce myself and say hello. I do have some cards. If I could leave them at the table, maybe people could pick them up on their way out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, members of the China Grove City Council, I'll try not to be repetitive of some of my comments that I'll be making tonight. Uh, my first comment uh, would be in regards to the minutes of the meeting where Mrs. Anita Mahalik came up to this podium and did mention where she had saw the mayor, his wife, Council Mokruski, and then Mr. Trainer drive up for this meeting that supposedly was taking place on December 21st. But if you would go back to the uh, recording, you would hear Doug Christie's name also in there. But that, the minutes have already been approved, so that's all my comment on that. Uh, my second comment would be in regards to the code compliant issues that I turned into the city on November the 16th regarding a five acre track located at 6820 via Cunha Street. This was November the 16th. A letter was written by the city of China Grove to bring this into compliance on December the 10th. Okay. Now, the letter was not sent certified letter, and I did suggest to the staff that perhaps your letters of compliance should be done with a certified letter. Okay. Now, in regards to this letter, it stated that they had seven days. Now, this is December 10th. They have seven days. This is the property that I explained to the council has weeds three to four foot tall, brush. They have a, a two accessory buildings on the property with no primary structure, which is in violation of another ordinance. And then of course they have the general nuisance ordinance, which is on the weeds and the property to be cleaned up. It is still not been cleaned up. On January 16, 2014, I spoke to the mayor concerning a revision to this letter to include the violation of the accessory buildings. I think the mayor remembers that, and he told me that he would do a revision and get with the staff on that. So on January the 30th, I visited the staff for to revise for the revision letter under the open records request and the other uh, non-compliant property, which I'll get to here. And. Uh, so I requested it under the open records, and on February the 4th, 
I did receive two letters which I requested, but not the revision letter. I received the December 10th letter again. So today is February 6th, and still to this point in time, the first non-compliant property, there has been no action taken on it. And I do suggest that uh, a certified letter go out immediately on this property. This is a fire hazard. Your fire chief has discussed with you. It's right next to my house. And uh, I keep my property looking like a golf course. And uh, this could damage my property if it gets out of control. On the second letter, for the 6720, the opinion, it was, it was well written. Uh, they did give the gentleman uh, his two ordinance violations, defining the nuisance and also uh, on a mobile home, which was no longer grandfathered. So that mobile home should be removed, and the letter states 10 days, and I just hope the council acts upon that particular non-compliance with the city. On my final matter with the city is I discovered on January the 16th that for the past nine months, me as the past mayor of the city of China Grove, that my name appears on every phone call that Mayor Gene Ripps makes to all the citizens of the China Grove or anyone. I do not feel that my name should be represented, and so I'm asking this city council to please and will especially so the mayor, to cease and desist the use of the phone until he can find the time or whoever can find the time to correct that matter. That's all on my comments for tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Next person on the agenda is Carlton Sewell. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. Uh, I guess it's time for politicians to come say hello to you, so here I am. Uh, I wanted to introduce myself briefly. My name is Carlton Sauls. I'm from San Antonio, and until about two weeks ago, well, actually about a week ago, I was a city, city council person uh, for San Antonio. I resigned that seat in order to run for county judge. So I'll be running on the Republican ticket. Uh, I'll be seeing whoever survives Tommy and uh, Nelson go at it in November. Uh, I want to come before you and let you know a little bit about myself, why I got into this, and, and what you can expect from me if I'm successful. You know, the reason I got into this race is in San Antonio, I was a northern council person, northern district, and what I saw was a disturbing trend where everything was focused towards downtown. And I mean, all the resources seemed to go one place. We had issues getting proper fire resources, police resources, roads, drains, things like that. Uh, I fought that long and hard, and in some cases successfully, but then I also saw the same thing happening at the county. And if you think about it, you know, we look at just a couple of issues like the streetcar issue, and that's not the sole problem, it's a, it's a symptom. That's a half a billion dollar program to build five miles of streetcar downtown that the citizens of Bear County are funded. And think about it, your transportation dollars, your sales tax dollars, your VIA dollars. That's money that we could use in other places to do things that are very important. On another project that's downtown focused, $200 million, right now it's 175, but it's heading north, of county flood control dollars. Remember, that's county-wide property tax flood control dollars, what we fix your low water crossings with. That is going into San Pedro Creek, one and a half miles downtown amenities trying to create another river walk so that we can develop downtown San Antonio. How does that benefit any of the other citizens of Bear County? I think it's time for, we, for us to go to a little bit different direction, that we need to expand our view to the 1.8 million people, 1,200 square miles, 23 municipalities that encompass Bear County and get away from the pure downtown San Antonio focus. I love San Antonio, I represented San Antonio, but there's more than just downtown San Antonio. So I'm running on that. It's not really a Republican or a Democrat issue, it's a money issue. What I can tell you is I have a very good reputation of working with other counties and other municipalities, uh, different boards and, and committees, and then my commitment to y'all is this wouldn't be the first time or the last time you saw me. 
that what I really want to do is sit down with all the folks from all the townships, the cities, understand their issues, and work together. Uh, there's things we can do here that I don't think are happening. Uh, I think all of the economic development has been pushed towards San Antonio. And maybe there's other things we can do out here in another municipality. So I, my commitment is to work with all of you and have an open door policy. I think I'm going to win in November. I'm going to work real hard at it. Uh, look forward to getting working. So thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Uh, again, I understand where you've been. I've sat in that chair a long time. And uh, it, it's a task that I don't think everybody gives enough credit for. But bless you for doing it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The first on the agenda is Mary Ann Hyde. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Hyde, and I'm not running for anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you could. Read it soon. I could, but I'm not going to. At not this point, though. Uh, no, uh, my uh, concern tonight is uh, just in a little <coughs> comment I will make. Uh, I've come to a few of the meetings. I don't make very many of them, but that's beside the point. Uh, but at various gatherings or various occasions throughout uh, China Grove or in the area, uh, people come up to me and go, what, what happened at the last meeting? Or why did they do that? Or why are they doing that? Or just, you know, like there's just a, a, a big question mark among a lot of the citizens. And I would like to make a comment that I, or make a plea, I guess, to the council that it would be nice, because I have been on the council many years ago, I mean, I was, so I know what it's like, uh, to make a to plea that, we, that the council become a little more transparent, a little more open to what's going on and why you're doing things, uh, more discussion uh, out in the open so that, I, that everybody understands. I mean, I know it's tough to make decisions sometimes, but a little discussion would help a whole lot, at least in my opinion, so that everybody knows why you picked that, or why you did this, or why you didn't do this, um, just so that there's a little more openness and transparency in the council. And I think that would go a long ways to soothing a lot of the um, stress in this community at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Next person on the agenda house.
Also, uh, one of my last uh, requests is that we could possibly update our phone answering machine here in the city uh, hall. We have numbers being given out to an animal control and a police department, which we have neither of right now. And that's also kind of misleading um, and false information that numbers giving out to people that no, some of us know that, but look, there's other citizens here that do not know that we no longer have it. You know, Linda's not able to help us with the animal control, and yet that number is being given out to people to call along with the police department, which we haven't had one of those since December. And I was really surprised to even hear that uh, the old secretary's voice was still on there, because I usually come up here in person to make, uh, if I have something to say, the girls are always very nice to listen to what I have to, to bring in. But I had to make a phone call. I didn't even leave a message because I just thought, well, I'd just rather come in person than have to go through that answering machine um, uh, answer. So anyway, that's just something I'd like to bring to your attention that it really looks bad on our city of China Grove to have uh, an answering machine that's not giving out proper information. And I'll have the other two things addressed with Linda on our next council meeting then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Person was going to keep you. Very good. You got my first name, <laughs> Good job. The last name's a doozy, isn't it? It's Olive Pussy, which rhymes with doozy. Well, it's nice to be here with you, Mayor and City Council. My name is Renette Olive and I'm on the ballot for the Republican primary for County Commissioner District 4. As you're well aware, the commissioners let contracts manage the budget, set the property tax rate as well as take care of infrastructure needs. I have a background in business. I, I got a degree from Carnegie College with Adam Ritz many years ago, and I went to uh, New York, uh, well, St. Mary's University, and got my MBA. I worked at Randolph Air Force Base as a contract negotiator for 33 years, and I saved taxpayers multi-millions of dollars through my negotiations. I also managed budgets for three large corporations. And I've served my community as uh, president of my neighborhood association and was on the school board as well. I was very active in the uh, political realm uh, at the local level until my mother had a stroke five years ago. And so I moved out of my home in the northwest side of <coughs> my mother and was four and took care of her in her home for the last five years until she passed in October. And uh, I was asked to run for county commissioner in December. And I looked at the, the you know, what's needed and, and what the background would be and what the job is, and it was a very perfect fit. I would like to serve you. I know where to cut the fat in the budget. That's my specialty. And to convert that into lowering our tax rate for our property taxes. I want to emphasize a lot about infrastructure, roads and bridges <coughs> are the key for us to all be able to function and do our jobs. I would like to protect the small businessman. Small business is the backbone of our economy, as you know. And right now, there's not a fair process with the county. The small business, businessman, I think, he can actually do business with the county. There's no transparency. There's no uh, nothing on the web telling anybody who got the contract or how much it was. I want to bring that transparency. I want to provide a means that if a small business person feels like he or she is not being treated fairly, that they have a higher authority that they can appeal to, and the contracting process can be stopped, and nothing will happen until everything's investigated, and if it's determined that the contractor was not being treated fairly, the higher authority can direct that that contract be awarded to the proper party. It's critical that we have transparency in our government because without transparency, there's no trust, and I want us to all move forward. I would appreciate very much your consideration for your vote, and I did bring some cards, and I'll stay for your meeting if you'd like to talk to you later. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Under new business, want to move I am um, I. The first item, the concern that to approve the city engineer contract with genuine medical engineers to provide necessary municipal engineering services. Yeah, how many 
the uh, president of Chimney Maverick Engineers, and uh, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I've been doing this for 26 years. Um, have the history, do you got anything that's voting for this? Or is all, I mean, you already uh, are. Okay, yeah, my name is Jim, Jim Clements, and uh, I'm a professional engineer. I have my PE in Texas in, in California, Burrow. I'm originally I'm a native of Texas. I was born in Corpus. I lived in San Antonio for most of my life. And uh, I have over 26 years of experience, of professional experience as an engineer. I worked uh, for 10 years for the city of San Antonio. I was a city of Pelota City Engineer a number of years ago when they had the whole Walmart deal that you know, may have remember reading about. So it was a very exciting time. And uh, I'm really delighted to have the opportunity to serve as your engineer if I'm you know, elected into that position tonight. Um, my approach to engineering is to try to keep things on a simple basis, you know, to streamline processes and get stuff done quickly and not waste a lot of time or money, you know. And, uh, and with the variety of different things I've done, everything from traffic engineering to pavement engineering, drainage, I was a city of San Antonio drainage engineer for the last couple of years, well, up until about a year ago. And uh, so I you know, have a real broad background in civil engineering, land development, and all of that, so, okay. This is Mayor, there has a, a room that has been submitted to the city that's in your, your packet. Um, I don't have the exhibit A, the, the rates on here. Yeah, you can okay. that. That submitted. Did you bring the exhibit A with you? you no, I did not. I mean, I have an electronic room.
I'd like to move that we uh, approve the city engineer contract with genuine Maverick engineers to provide the necessary municipal engineering services to try to work as needed. Yeah, motion on the floor to approve the contract for professional engineering services, engineering services agreement with the uh, genuine Maverick Engineering Corporation. Do I have a second? Do I have a second from Councilman Trainer? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion to carry. Next item on new business, the IMA consider an act on a revised franchise agreement with CPS Energy to increase 1.5 increase in the franchise fee and extend the term.
And you said the flatbed? Yeah, flatbed, flatbed truck? you said. The ones that are out there now, that, that, that kind of flatbeds? Yes, sir. Three, maybe four? Yes. No, no, they don't do any 18-wheeler trucks or anything else. Bobcats? I mean, uh, Bobcats, 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 No. There is one ton duty. There's one, there's one ton, one ton. And what, what are they hauling? They're hauling uh, water pumps and trash pumps from Goblin Pumps, which is over here by Heroes Ice House. Basically, all they do is they, they have a rental company and they re rent them. So they rent them from them and they take them to the old fill and re rent them out. I'm sorry, I mean, how many trucks? They have three or four trucks, but they're the, uh, all they want to do is the place to come and go, so their trucks don't stay there. Their drivers come in when they need to get a trailer, they get a trailer and leave if, if that's what they want to do. So, how much land do you lease them? Uh, what do you lease Well, where, where Pell State building used to be, mm -hmm. they're going to rent a portion of that building mm -hmm. in an area large enough to store their three trailers. Portion of that building being what? Uh, restrooms? No? The building is actually kind of in two parts. One part of it is uh, has a restroom and, and three offices and a single bay door where they can park the truck or trailer and everything. So while the trucks are not running, stuff there'll be an office there running? No. No? They're, they're just using it strictly for staging here. So basically, they would have their personal trucks there when they're in the truck, or you know, in the basically truck? the truck that they come in to get the trailer. Okay, and the so truck they leave. Yeah. yeah, I mean they don't. They don't. This isn't, this isn't a place they report to work, park the vehicle, from getting another vehicle. It's a place where they would come, and when they show up, they would uh, drive the truck that they're going to drive to pick the truck trailer up to go move whatever equipment they need. <clears throat> They're empty. Yes. They'll store many pumps. Are you just, do, you, do you store very many pumps or you just rent them on as is needed? Well, we, it's not my company, but the thing, they, they have not really started business there, but they all they do is pick them up and move them. They do not store the pumps. Okay. Like I said, they're renting them from Goblin Pumps, and when they pick them up, they're taking them to a job. I, I just had a couple of comments. Uh, my understanding is the actual person who's going to be operating the business applies for the for permit. Now, certainly, we can speak for them. My recommendation is, as long as the zoning is correct, and I believe it is, uh, that they submit their application and let Mr. Clinton uh, take a look at it and make sure they're complying with our codes and what have you. Question of application so we can prove yeah. that. I don't know. Do we have an application? Okay. Can you get them to do that? Yes, can. I think, is there a fee for that? It's $100. $100. Yeah. I'm sorry. What was the question I want to ask you is, because we just don't want to get any you know, nothing against the Pell State. I know they grew, which is fine. That's sufficient. We don't, don't want to get to the start of five or ten. I mean, can we make the motion that way that you're saying? I really don't think it's five. You're saying three or four, but we kind of have the same agreement with Pell well, State and eight. Before we knew it, they had right. 15, 20. We the need to see the application. So until okay. someone's put in line, we don't know what their plans are out there. But as long as they comply with the city zoning regulations and, and Okay. Well, like I said, they 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 got on the agenda. And like I said, they weren't here, so. But uh, I will have them uh, come up here and call and pick for it. So. In, in the area they're going to be storing all this on the traders and all that's that's on dirt, not on not on uh, base. There's asphalt there. Is there asphalt? Yes. Uh, the area where they're going to be parked. Yes. So none of this will be on. Um, Hell State was somewhere. They had, they had a bunch of it on dirt, yes. On dirt, but, right. yeah, they were there. We're not looking at something like that? No. Good. I'll, I'll 
coffee. I'd like to see what he's going to do if he can put that together for us and look at it and a little bit more information. Okay. What, what do they need to do and what I, do they I need think to fill out? They need to submit, submit the, the required fee, submit a site plan, and see where they're, where they're uh, how are they, you know, I, I don't know what the place looks like. Do they you know, have on site sewer? Is there, is there a building there already? Is the building there already? Where, where are they getting their water from? Things like that. It's not a complicated process, but there has to be the documents submitted so right. that we can make sure that the code is being complied with. No problem. All right. Thank you. So if you want to take that to the next time, this one will
Is that the same building? Yes. You'd be building half, half of it or something? Yes. And you'd be building barbecue pits? Yes, sir. You know Mr. Lambs will put it. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah? Same thing. My recognition is the same. Yes, the, the first the first is the, the one that's kind of in the middle the, of the field the, behind the first building. Well, the first the first building is the title of the building. Right. That is that is the rock building. The second building is the five thousand square foot building, which was the main building for Pell State. The one that has the awning. It has the awning on it, yes. And then there's another building yes. just a little ways out. Yes. Going back. Okay. In, in the future. So the one you're gonna these guys want to be in the moment to honor. Yes. So right behind that top of the Yes. All right, the, first, the first half of the building would be the the rental company. The second half, which would be the majority of the building, would be Bad Abbott Barbecue Pits. And like I said, we're on city water. They each have separate restroom facilities. They'll have their own. The rental company will have their own restroom facilities within the building. Now, is that the next building occupied as well? Or one of the yes, I mean, that building was still there. I mean, the, the building was still currently leased by Pell State. Oh, okay. Do you still have anything there? Basically, what they use that for is a staging area. They do their fracking jobs or whatever. And when their employees come in, they go out for a week or two at a time. And they don't have parking in their current location. Handle the overflow, so they just basically use that as overflow parking. Personal vehicles? Yeah, personal vehicles. <laughs>